Hi, welcome back to the Long Rip. Uh, we're on episode 11. Uh, it's called Making It on the Tennis Team. And we're going to start out with a story from the Lam Rim about Chok Sung. And Chok means supreme. And Sung means a, a pair of two people. Okay, And this is an important word in, in secret practice. And I can't tell you about it. But anyway, Chok Sung means the big two. And this refers to two of the most famous disciples of Lord Buddha, uh, which is Shariputra and Maudgalyayana. And we know Shariputra because he's the hero in the Heart Sutra, uh, and he gets to ask a question. And because of his question, uh, we find we get the Heart Sutra. We get to hear the whole Heart Sutra. So the Buddha. It. It. By the way, it is traditionally taught that these two disciples of the Buddha became arhats. They reached nirvana but they reached it on a lower track, okay? So they're in this category. Both of them are in this category of people who have reached a very high personal space where they are in complete bliss and they kind of are, are not so interested in the bodhisattva ideal of, of trying to meet every living being and give this promise to them that I will take care of you, okay? They... they Traditionally, they're having too much bliss in nirvana to, to think about that much. So it happened one day uh, that uh, Lord Buddha came to these two. And I don't know if he shook them away or I don't know how he did it, but he, he, he said, you know, I want to teach you guys about this higher thing where you take care of everybody. And I, I want you to have this personal experience where you meet uh, every living being, I, I think it would change your life forever. So he encouraged them. And, uh, and the reply by these two arhats was, Mozart wa dukyang, okay? Mozart wa dukyang, in the second line here, Seiji probably. Mozart wa dukyang, wow, that sounds amazing, you know, to meet every single living being. That, yeah, that would be something special. Kyang, but. Ever since we reached nirvana, we've been like a bump on a log, okay? It says here, a uh, tree trunk burned by, a, a, an inert tree trunk burned by fire or something like that. But it, what it means is, you know, we're just totally out of it. You know, it's, that sounds wonderful, Buddha, but, you know, don't teach this stuff to us. We're already in this kind of spaced out place and we're going to be here for millions of years, you know. So, chijar, chijar mindu, you know. We're not the people to be teaching this stuff because we're already, we're already wrapped up in our personal nirvana. You're kind of wasting your time with us, okay. And so there's this incident where even this great arhat who, who requested the Heart Sutra, was staying in this kind of space and told Lord Buddha, maybe you shouldn't waste your time on us because we're, we're in a good, bad place and, and we, we can't really do it, you know. Minduk ches sulwa sumba papa sharitabu chubinyanta. Then Pabongkurma uh, Che comes to Shariputra's defense and he says, look, Shariputra, this Arya, he was just faking it, okay? He, he, he had not entered a, a, a selfish personal nirvana. He was just faking it, you know? And the answer he gave, you know, don't waste your time on us, was for the benefit of other people, okay? Uh, which is, uh, okay? Nyente rang tsemba shen la gong ne sun. This gong means, uh, you know, he was faking it. Uh, Shariputra was faking it. And he was trying to be a good example for the other potential nirvana seekers in their group, in their student group. You know, he was trying to say, don't make the same mistake I made. You know, don't become immune to the higher teachings. You know, uh, don't make this mistake. I made that mistake, you guys don't make it. But he was just faking it. So he's one of those people, like in the Heart Sutra, that 
by tradition might even be considered a Buddha asking another Buddha question. Who's the other Buddha in this case? For zero dollars. Avalokiteshvara, right? Uh, or Bodhisattva. Okay. Okay, Ran Sembala Gone Sumbashin Sangyawala Pache Che. Anyway, uh, reaching this lower nirvana is a big obstacle to Tsangyawa, which is the verb for Buddhahood, to become a Buddha. Okay. Tena, therefore, Rang Reng and Jungi Lola Nyoma Tumbana. So, should we skip all the stages of the Larmim? which are meant for people of lower capacity or medium capacity. Are, are you telling me that we should just skip those lower steps? And the answer is uh, no. Nyongma Tumba means get good at being sad about the state of the world. Get good at being sad about the state of the world. Get good at it. And then, Techenkin Lam Langepa Jungge, you must enter the greater way. You must seek this experience where you meet all the living beings in the universe and and personally commit to them to help them. Okay? The purpose for studying the steps of the path for people of medium capacity uh, is to get this kind of state of mind where we are tired of all all the kinds of life you could live in this in this sansara, okay, in the suffering life, okay, even a human life, even a wealthy human life, even a wealthy human life with lots of script, scriptures around, mixed nuts, <laughs> okay, even those we don't want, we want to go beyond those, okay. Lam ngula doi chermino, but it's not the real path. Wow, okay, it's necessary to get to the real path. But it's not the real path. It is a part of the steps of the path, but it's not the path you want to get on in the end. Okay? All right. Namkin Moshini, Kyebu Chembu Chanju Sem Jongte. Then he says something kind of radical, and I, I've, I've seen people misunderstand this statement. Uh, uh, how do I say it? He says, can you show the next picture? Okay. I like this next picture. Okay. I don't know about you, but, you know, and I haven't gone to a lot of concerts in my life, but uh, in this next picture, uh, you see, uh, okay, well, who are these guys? Uh, they're playing pretty bad, I'll tell you that. And they're the opening act, okay? They're the opening act. And I don't know, like, you buy a ticket for a great band. You want to go see them in, in live, in person. You know, it's a two-hour, three-hour concert. And when you get there, there's some other dumb band playing, you know, who are not very good. And they're called the opening act. In English, they're called the opening act. These are, I don't know, somehow they got this job to play for an hour to waste time so the real superstar guys could, you know, relax in the back. And you have to sit through these guys for an hour. Okay, what's that got to do with anything? Uh, and then sometimes, by the way, the superstar comes on, plays two songs, goes away, and the bad band comes back. That's what's happening with the long rim, okay? Uh, the first part we studied, uh, the first part we studied, the steps of the path for people of lesser capacity or medium capacity. People who just want to stay out of the lower realms, or people who just want to stay out of any rebirth in general, though all of those uh, people, they're not the real practice, okay? They're just the warm-up band, okay? They're just the opening act band. They're not the, what do you call that? You call it opening act? Uh, there's another name. Yeah, anyway, uh, this steps of the path that we spent years on, that's not the real thing, okay? That's not the real concert. That's not the music of the Lam Rim. That was just to warm you up, okay? And, and by the way, and then he says something radical. 
Okay, you ready for this? Uh, the six perfections are also the opening act coming back at the end. <laughs> the six perfections are, are also opening act. They're not the main thing. That's a, it's an incredible statement, okay? Uh, the steps of the path to, to get out of a lower birth or to get out of birth in general, they're not the main thing. And the six perfections are not the main thing. So what's that leap? Yeah, it's the experience of, of meeting everybody in the universe and committing to each one individually. I will help you. you know, that, he, Pablo Krimiche is making a very radical statement. That's the main act. That's the Rolling Stones. Okay? That's the thing you've been waiting to hear. And that's what I want you to focus on. Okay? Very extraordinary statement. I mean, if you're a real Buddhist practitioner, you're like, wow, that's pretty heavy. Okay. All right, then I give a lam la lopa la tambo to a kepe chirdu. So great lamas have written advertisements for this uh, studying, studying this greater way, studying the path of a bodhisattva, okay? Great lamas in the past have done a sales job for this bodhicitta, for trying to get this bodhicitta, trying to have this experience. And one of them is the great fifth Dai Lama, uh, who lived 1617 to 1682. No one got that. And he wrote a book called John Bel Shalom, which we have studied uh, already. It's called The Word of Manjushri, right? Uh, Sungbashin. He lists uh, cool things that are, go are going to happen if you get this experience. If you can just get to this experience, by the way, which you have to do in meditation, if you can just get to this experience of meeting all these beings, just get to that, okay? Mundanangne, Chepa, Changlandu, Sungbashin. Pen, ten different things are going to happen to you, okay? Now, uh, they're not listed so clearly in that short long room, but, but in this long room, they're covered in detail, okay? Long ne, chepa, charglen de yepe, de da shepa di la chu. So, ever since the days of the fifth Dalai Lama, it's been a tradition at this point to introduce the students to ten cool things that are going to happen to you if you can reach this peak experience with every living being, okay? Let's go through the list briefly, and then Pabon Krumpache is going to go into great detail. In fact, the great detail that the Lama goes into on these ten mean that we're not going to finish the ten during this retreat. We'll have to finish them in the next retreat, okay? But we'll get partway through the list, okay? So ten different amazing things, okay? Number one, if you have this experience with every living being, Ten special things are going to happen to you. Number one, it's the only way to enter the path of the, of the Bodhisattvas, okay, is to have this experience. There is no other way, okay? You have to have this experience. There are many uh, systems like Gyunde uh, Menga Dun, you know, the seven step method or Dakshan Yamje, exchanging self and others. But they are methods to get to this experience, okay? Uh, when you get to this experience, only then can we say you're on the Mahayana. Then you're on, then you're on the higher path, and you don't have to go back to pick up your lunch or something that you left in your house, okay? Uh, second, Gyawe Se She Jawe Ming Tok. And I love this. Uh, from the moment you have that experience and Buddhists talk about you, they will say, uh, Tim, my son, or Seiji, my son. They will start to refer to you as their son or your daughter, okay? And that's such a sweet thing uh, when the Buddhists start talking to you about you as if you were really their son or daughter. And of course they love all living beings. Of course they love all living beings equally. 
But those living beings who are very close to joining the family of enlightened beings, they, they have a special feeling about them, and they say, my son. They refer to them as my son or my daughter. And, and it's very sweet, you know, if you've ever had this relationship. I had this relationship with my, my heart teacher, in, uh, Ken Rinpoche. And, and when, he, when people met him, he would refer to me as his son. And it was a very deep, uh, deep love, deep thing. So when you, when you have this experience, then the enlightened beings of the universe start saying, oh, oh, he's, he's one of my sons, or he's, she's one of my daughters, okay? Okay, benefit number three, nian rang reki gone silki numba. Then you join a family, you join a select family, and you are completely different from other people, especially uh, people who are on lower path, okay? You are totally, I like to think of it as you are at an evolutionary higher level. Okay? You are no longer even in their league. You're in a different league. Okay? You're in a different family. Okay? Number four, Chippe Shing Chok Tukjurwa. Something cool happens. I don't know. This is kind of sexy. But uh, if you have had this experience and people uh, respect you at all for that, they get incredible good karma, okay? So that's kind of a nice reason to have the experience, you see? Then uh, after that, if you're a nice person and people think you're nice, then they get like 10 billion more seats uh, by thinking of you well, okay? It's kind of of a strange benefit. Or they give you a cup of tea, then for them it's like giving a thousand cups of tea or a million cups of tea because you're a different person. You're, you're a different being. So it's kind of fun to be a person who, if other people uh, get to know you, then automatically they are making great karma. Okay. All right, uh, number five. So kya chambo de lak to it's easy for you to collect massive amounts of good seeds, okay? Uh, when you have that experience, uh, you get uh, a, a number of seeds in your mind which is unimaginable. And they will carry you to amazing places. And you know that. You, you, you see that, okay? Dig dip near the Jawa. Of course, every Bodhisattva still has a lot of old bad seeds. And Every bodhisattva, even who has seen emptiness directly or had this bodhisattva experience, bodhicitta experience directly, they still have a lot of bad seeds in their mind. They still make mistakes. They have not eliminated the, the mental afflictions. They are not arhats yet. They still have a lot of problems, okay? But they can clean their mind out relatively faster than, the, than other people, okay? Number seven, Chisamba Dupa. Any goal, spiritual goal you set your mind to, you can achieve it, okay? Uh, you know, I would like to learn master Sanskrit so I could help more people or something like that, or, you know, I don't know. I'd like to be able to tell the future, and then I could help people more. So whatever you dream of, uh, you're able to achieve it, okay? Uh, number eight, Nabhadam Parcheki Mitsupa. You don't get extraordinary obstacles, okay? They, they avoid you. Okay. Uh, we'll talk, by the way, each one of these has a long explanation which is coming, okay? I'm just giving you the 10 quickly. Salang Tamche Nyodhizopa. You can move up through the Bodhisattva levels. Uh, you can get through the five paths uh, very, very quickly and reach the end. Number 10, Doe Deki Maluba Jungwe Shingsar Yurwao. You become a farmer's field in which all of the wishes of every living being can grow and be eaten, yummy, yummily, later. <laughs> okay, something like that. Okay. All right. Uh, okay, so we're going to talk about the first one. We still have some time. We're going to talk about this first 
we're going to talk about the first of the 10 cool things that happens to you uh, if you can get to this core experience, okay? Dhammoni, uh, and, uh, and I like to, I like to think, okay, so uh, when I was a, a kid, uh, my parents got divorced, and my mother had no skills and no money, and she went to school. Uh, at that time, the only job a woman could get was a secretary or a school teacher. And she went to school and became a school teacher. And she had four boys, no money. And, uh, you know, our, our life was, it wasn't like we were hungry regularly. Uh, once in a while we were hungry, but, um, but we had to be careful with money. And uh, I remember one day she said, okay, boys, we're going to have a family meeting. And we all got there and she said, uh, look, uh, we don't have so much money, so we're going to make this democratic. Uh, we either have money to go see movies once in a while, <laughs> or I have money to put you in the tennis club. You know, you can learn to play tennis in the tennis club. And then, uh, then we said, Mom, okay, we will let you know. And all four brothers, we went to another room, and we, we were talking it over, you know, like, do you want, let's go see movies. Yeah, I mean, who wants to play tennis? And they're like, yeah, let's go vote for the movies. And then my older brother said, no, no, mom's trying to trick you. And, and we said, well, what, what do you mean? Oh, she wants you to vote for the movies because it's cheaper. And the tennis club is more expensive. And we said, but we don't want to learn tennis. He says, you, you deuce, deuce means dumb, dumb guy, you deuce. The tennis club has a swimming pool. You know, you can go swimming anytime you want, you know. She didn't tell you that because it's more expensive. Vote for, the, vote for the tennis club. And then we get to go to the swimming pool anytime we want. So, you know, we all voted for the tennis club. And then my mom decided we had to learn tennis to swim in the pool. So we, we learned tennis. She thought, if she, I think if yoga had existed, it would have been yoga. But she said, oh, this is something that will keep you fit for the rest of your life. It doesn't, it's not like football. You do football until you're 20 years old, and then you hurt your knees and you stop, or soccer. <laughs> but uh, tennis, you can play. She played tennis till a few weeks before she died. Uh, so she said, this is good. This is going to be good for your whole life. So we learned. Uh, but in my youth, tennis was considered very wimpy and only... Only like weird kids, weird skinny kids. Right? Don't show this one yet. <laughs> That's the punchline. Uh, yeah, only weird uh, kids. You gotta show the last one. Uh, this this little what do you get? Little boys with buck teeth. You know, they they. This looks like Seiji when he was a kid, actually. Uh, yeah, only weird kids want to play tennis. You know. Why are we talking about that? Uh, later, when I got to high school, they had a tennis team. And, and if you made it on the team, there were only five guys allowed on the team. Six. Only six guys allowed on the team. And if you made it on the team, you got a special jacket. And if you had the special jacket, it was very easy to get a girlfriend. <laughs> so we all wanted this special jacket, letter, letter jacket. We all wanted one, so I'm like, yeah, I know tennis. I can, I can get on the team. So I was trying really hard to get on the team, okay? So this little guy with the tennis racket is me. Uh, you know, wa I want to get on the team, Mom. Okay, here we go. Dambuni de la te chengi chao de chumi chikyang. Chanjuki samdi gyu la ke ma ke ki chepayin. The question of whether you get on the team called bodhisattvas depends on whether you have this experience or not. Got it? So if you want to get on the tennis team, meaning if you want to be on the bodhisattva team, uh, you have to have this experience. Okay? So that's the first benefit of having this experience with all living beings. You know? If you have it, you're in this special club. You get the special bodhisattva jacket. All the bodhisattva girls fall in love with you. Okay? Or the boys, okay? Uh, okay. 
Okay, it's a long stretch, but just put up with it. Okay, Jay La Mei Kyang, Che Tek Chen Yin Bei Mi Choki Kazak Tek Chen Bu Tzu Bu Shi Gu. Even Tsongkhapa said, I don't care if the book you're reading is a Bodhisattva's book or not. Seiji's supposed to translate the Bodhisattva's way or not. Tsongkhapa's like, I don't care. I want to know if you join the club or not. You know, Tek Chen Bu Tzu means, are you one of those select VIP people who has joined the Bodhisattva Club, who has had that experience. That's, that's the only thing I want to know. I don't care what book you're reading. I don't care what books you're, you're studying. I don't care if you're translating Mahayana book. I want to know, have you had that experience or not? Take Chimbar Chepa Yang, Chandra Nila Rak Nepe. And whether you've joined that club only depends on whether you've had that experience. Semde Go Atsamle Mena, Take Chen Layan Den Dala. And if your experience of that experience is just Geshe Michael telling you about that experience, then you are also that kind of bodhisattva, okay? We just talk about you like a bodhisattva, but, but you're not, okay? okay? You're not on the bodhisattva track, okay? You just can repeat what someone said about it, okay? All right, Deinandala, Shen Sok Sumbashin, Jensong Kappa said that. Chanjungi Sem Di Gyula Mena, so suppose you don't have this experience. And uh, Gyugel, Gyugel means a king of all tantras. Tartuk, the ultimate king of all tantras. Bel Samadupa, Guhya Samaja, which was one of, one of Tsongkhapa's favorite tantras. His real favorite was Vajrayogini, but that's secret. Dupatabu Kedzog Nyam Lankyang. You can practice uh, the two stages of tantra uh, from the highest tantric book there is, but gyang, sangyagyuta shok, that's not going to make you a Buddha. Techen so lan sanduang shukmitup, that tantra won't even enable you to enter the first of the five paths on the Bodhisattva track. Okay? So forget the tantras, you know, try to have this experience. Do what you can to have this experience. How to have it. Uh, study the, the two methods we have, exchanging self and others, exchanging and equalizing. Equalizing and exchanging is self and others. And then the seven-step uh, method uh, taught by Lord Atisha. We're going to study it, okay? All right. De partial tempa chamba chusuang mindrola. If you're studying, uh, if you're studying Mahayana, and you haven't had this experience, then I would question whether you are studying Mahayana. Okay? That's kind of heavy. Semdi uh, yuna, but if you have had this experience, mani sachik tambang take chengi chu. And uh, all you know how to do is om mani bemihu, om mani bemihu, one time around on your rosary. That becomes the study of the Mahayana teachings. Okay? Te chen su yang. Sangyawe Giri Jote, and that one time of reciting that mantra on your rosary will be enough to get you enlightened. Okay, last thing to show you is this picture. And uh, you ready? <laughs> I found it today. Uh, you know, me and Veronica found it, but uh, anyway, uh, I did make the team. And it was cool, okay? That guy in the middle with the hair uh, is, is uh, so, so it is possible to make this team. And whether or not you make this team, uh, it just depends on learning those methods, uh, equalizing and exchanging yourself and others. And then just keep trying, just keep doing it uh, sincerely, and you will have that experience. And then there's, and then your life has been valuable. Then you've had a good life. If you just have that experience, you have a good life. Okay. See you then in episode 12.